Job had gone through so much in his struggle. This was a testing period for him. And through all, all of that, he himself spoke and so did his three friends. Everybody has spoken. Now it's time for God to speak. Let's hear what he says. This lesson is entitled, Hope Satisfies. Ladies and gentlemen, there are notes for this lesson. I'll leave a link in the description and in the comment section. Click that link, get your notes, your Sunday school books, and your Bibles. For the Kojic Legacy Edition of the Sunday School is now in session. Join me. Let's go. Teaching the Word of God in the spirit of excellence. Join Elder Rodney Jones with our Sunday School lesson. Building and equipping the children of God. Grab your Bibles, grab your notes, get your lessons and get ready. Sunday school is now in session. Yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen. Sunday school is now in session, as says two of my granddaughters, Amaya and Bria. Hello, I'm Pastor Rodney Jones. I'm the pastor of the New Nation Anointed Ministries, Church of God in Christ. We're located at 1700 West 87th Street in the city of Chicago. I'm zip code is 60620. If this is your first time, I'd like to thank you. If this is your first time, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. If this is your first time, welcome to Sunday School. Thank you for taking the time out to study this lesson with us. Make sure you take the moment and the time, please, sir, and please, ma'am, to hit that thumbs up. Smash that button. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. It's a free subscription. And click the bell so that YouTube will notify you each week. Bing! Brother Jones just uploaded another lesson. We got another good in here. We're dealing with hope satisfies. Now, it was brought to my attention that someone was kind of concerned on last week. Hope was Job. But this week, hope appears to be God. Or what are your thoughts? Who is the hope in today's lesson? Who is the hope in last week's lesson? We're going to continue today's discussion. It's October the 20th, 2024. This is the Kojic Legacy Edition. And no, ladies and gentlemen, I have not stopped teaching the lesson. Rest assured, if I ever stop teaching this lesson, I will put out a video. The issue is I have been very busy as a pastor and as a husband, father, son, whatever the case may be. And it caused me to upload these videos at the latter part of the week as a matter of fact soon as i finish this today being friday i have a 740 flight for i call it st louis <laughs> missouri but it is actually caseyville illinois to be with my friend and brother pastor nathan johnson for their sunday school conference all right i'll show you all that information later on today we're dealing with job the 42nd chapter verses 1 through 10 October 20, 2024. If this is your birthday, happy birthday. If this is your anniversary, happy anniversary. I want to challenge you in this particular lesson we're dealing with. Let me give you a little brief history about it. So the Bible said that Job was an upright and a perfect man. He was a man that feared God, but he is true or hated evil, Job 1 and 1. He had seven daughters and three sons. He was one of the greatest men's in this earth, or uh, or he had the greatest of substance, I should say, among men in the land that he lived in. There came a time where God and Satan had a conversation about Job, and God says, have you considered my servant Job, that there's nobody like him? He's an upright man, he is true of evil, and he walks in integrity. And that's when the battle begins, where Satan says, if you remove your hand from him, he will curse you, and God put him to the test. Meanwhile, Job's body was afflicted from, tail, from, from feet to his head with boils. 
And the Bible said that his three friends came to be with him. They sat there with him for seven days and said nothing because they saw that his body was covered. They rent their clothes and began to mourn with them. When they got through mourning, then those brothers began to accuse Job of committing some type of sin or some type of wrong. And he not only is afflicted by God, going through a test, loses family, and his wife is against him. But now his friends that sits with him accuses him of doing wrong. And then this brings us to into our lesson. I'm going to read the 10 verses real quickly and move on. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withheld from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I pray thee and I will speak. I will command of thee, or demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eyes seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so, that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee, and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly that you have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite went, and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. This is the reading of our lesson. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our souls and the people of God. Take a moment and type amen. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. We thank you for this lesson. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's see if I push my foot pedal. There it is. Ah, my Sunday school conference is coming up. It's free. I'll show you that at the end. I'm going to show you all how I do all of this if you want to know what it is. All right. I got some things I want to challenge you about. Here we go. Number one. Number one. Hope satisfied. Number one. Never judge a person by what they are experiencing. Never judge a person based off of what they are experiencing because you don't know the nature or the purpose of what they are going through. So never judge. Number two, never speak for God <clears throat> unless he is the one that told you what to do. Never speak for God unless God sent you. Because here in this lesson, Job's friend began to represent God. But God says, I didn't send you. You did not rightfully represent me as my servant Job did. Number three, I need you to understand that suffering does not mean that you sin. We sometimes go through. Stop blaming the devil on everything you go through. Because sometimes you are calling God the devil. Because sometimes it's God that's putting us or allowing us to go through the test. Number four, the Lord is who causes us to prosper. And I need us to understand that we're prospering because the Lord is who is causing us, allowing us, willing us to prosper and nobody else. Which means when we lose things, remember this, God can restore double for your loss. Somebody need to type that. God can restore double for your loss. I'm moving fast. Lastly, hopefully, your suffering may be God's testing. Mm -hmm. Your suffering may be God's testing. I'll give you a moment 
once I find out what I'm looking at, I'll give you a moment right here to look at that and see what you can come up with. There it is right there. I might have another point if I hit that screen. If it don't, then oh well, it's gone. It's gone. Versus <laughs> verse number one. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withheld from thee. So he, here we have Job. It's Job's time to talk. Now what's interesting about this whole thing is Job's friends have been accusing Job and Job is sitting there. How would you feel if, if you didn't do anything wrong, you hadn't committed sin, you paid your tithes, because, you know, sometimes first thing they say is you must ain't paid your tithe. How would you feel? This is a question. If your friends, your loved ones, was accusing you of doing wrong and you know without a shadow of a doubt you hadn't done anything wrong yet, but for some reason, they just can't believe you. Can you fathom what Job was going through, knowing that he was going through something? He didn't think he was guilty. He didn't know what was going on. There was no way to get out. He lost his family. He lost his, his land. He lost his substance and everything. His wife is the only one that was there. The devil chose to leave her there for a purpose. I'm going to leave that alone. The Bible said, then Job answered the Lord. And here is what Job says. I know that you can't do everything and that no thought can be withheld from you. Let's see. So this is Job's second time answering the Lord. Job 43 through 7. God first, first spoke to Job out of the whirlwind in Job 38. You can also see Job 40 and number 6. And God began by giving Job a series of questions in Job 38. Because God told Abraham, he says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Job 18 and 14. Job says, I understand that you have all might and that there is nothing or no restraints to your plan. <laughs> there was nothing that can stop the plan and the purpose of God is what he said. The Bible said that he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast in Psalm 33 and 9. God is sovereign. And nothing is inaccessible to him. God's purpose will come to pass. Job says it right here. He says, I know that thou canst do. Canst do means you got all might. You have power and you can prevail and you're able and you have the ability to do everything. Because Job had to recognize that God is omnipotent or omnipotent, meaning all powerful. In other words, he doesn't just have power, but power comes from God. Job recognized that. It's interesting that we don't. He says and that no thought can be withheld from you. Now, what's interesting is the word thought. The word thought means plan. It means intent and purpose. No plan, no intent, and no purpose can be withheld. The word withheld means to restrain, fix up, or make inaccessible. Based on the previous statement, this word thought means purpose. So Job used the word withered or withheld, which means restrained or make inaccessible. Job said he now understands that God has all power to do what he wills. <laughs> He understands that nothing can stop, withhold the purpose or the thought of God. Nothing can withhold your purpose is what he says. Verses number three, he says, who is he that hideth counsel? So that was the question that God says. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which hmm, I knew not, is what he said. So Job is not asking God, but he is quoting from God's initial question in Job 38 and 2. 
God said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge in Job 38 and 2? God's ways are not like our ways, nor his thoughts ours, Isaiah 55 and 8. So Job questioned the wisdom of God out of ignorance. He admitted that he has been talking without or about things that he them, himself didn't have a knowledge of. And we do that a whole lot. It's all throughout social media. So the question is, who is he that hideth? Hideth, which means to, to veil or to conceal. Who is he that hideth counsel, which is the plan or prudence or even the purpose without knowledge, ignorantly or even unaware? God asked Job this first question in Job 38 and 2. God charged Job with hiding God's counsel. In other words, you don't have a clue of what I'm doing. You don't understand my purpose. And a lot of times when we are going through, when we challenge God, we're challenging God's counsel. We're challenging his plans. We're challenging his purposes. And we don't have a clue. And my friend said, and we can't even buy a vow <laughs> as to what God is doing. So sometimes we abandon ship right at the tip of the plan of God, the purpose of God in our life. We throw in or throw the, or out the towel. And Job and his friends thought they understood or knew God, especially his three friends. Job was not as guilty as his friends was. His friends was accusing God of a whole lot. And we're going to see what God had to say about them in this lesson. He says, so who is he that hideth to conceal the plan, the prudence, the advice, or the, the purpose of God on the wares with, without discernment, without no perception, without no answer, you're doing this ignorantly. Who is this that hides or conceals God's counsel? You're doing this ignorantly. It says, therefore, I utter that I understood not. I uttered, I expound, I begin to tell or to publish that that I understood, which means I couldn't, I didn't have an insight of. Job said, I began to speak about things that I didn't have a clue, a knowledge, an insight, an understanding, a perception, wisdom, or knowledge about. He said, things too wonderful or great or difficult or even hidden, things that are too high for me to even understand. It's what Job said, all of that in that particular verse. Lay down. Here. I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand, that's a cute word, it's not as what y'all think it is, of thee, and declare thou unto me. Demand and declare. Demand, which means to inquire, to request, and to ask. To declare means to know to answer or even to instruct. So once again, Job was not demanding the Lord to listen. Job says, listen, please, or please listen to what I'm about to answer you. Job was not demanding the Lord to do anything. He's quoting God again, Job 38 and 3. God was the one who said to Job, I will demand of thee, Job 38 and 3. God listened to Job and his three friends talk what they didn't know about God. We do this every Sunday. My God today. And God called out Job from the whirlwind and asked him a series of questions. Oh, Job, I'm putting you on the floor and I'm going to demand some answers out of you is what God said to Job. Now, watch what Job says. Let me highlight this. I have heard of thee, thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes seeth he. In other words, I never had a relationship with you, an intimacy, an intimacy with you. I didn't have a full understanding or knowledge of you. I only heard of you by the hearing of the ear. But now mine eyes see of you. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. I abhor myself 
And Job says, I beg your pardon, sir. I repent. Yes. So these verses bring confusion to men concerning the relationship of God and Job. Many believe that Job had a personal relationship with God. The statement says that he didn't. From the beginning of Job, the Bible says a few things about him. The Bible says that Job was upright, perfect, feared God, hated evil, Job 1 and 1. From the mouth of God himself, Job 1 and 8, he called Job his servant. He said that there was none like him in all the earth. God said that Job was perfect and an upright man. God said Job feared and is true evil. Point number six, Job offered sacrifices just in case his children sinned against God, Job 1 and 5. Yet Job stated that he really didn't know God relationally. He said, I've heard of you by the hearing. So Job confessed that he didn't really know God or about God. He only knew about God as much as he heard about God. Yet this man is called the servant of God. This is blowing my mind because we have had seen miracles, been healed, been delivered, been set free, been saved, been snatched out of darkness, snatched out of sin by the power, the authority, the hand, the wisdom, the skill, and the pleasure of God. Yet we don't know God as Job did because Job didn't have a personal relationship with God, but Job did what was right in the eyes of God. My God today, we don't have no excuse. Job didn't have the Holy Spirit. But we use the Holy Spirit only for speaking in tongues. Jones, keep on moving. Keep on. <laughs> so he said, I heard of you. <laughs> I got to get a plane. I heard of you by the hearing of the ear. That's how I heard about you. From what they told me about you. But now I'm experiencing you. Now he said, I, I, I can see you. Job is not saying that he see God with the physical eye because no man can see God uh, and live. So Job says, now I'm having a different understanding and a relationship with and for and of uh, and by you. Verse number seven says, and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, that the Lord, the self-existent one said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee and against your two friends. Notice that he didn't call them friends of Job. For you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job has. Now, if you notice, he keeps calling Job his servant. So after God finished speaking to Job, he began to speak to Eliphaz. Uh, yeah, uh, Job 47 through 14. God speaks to him who appears to be the spokesman because Eliphaz was the first one to rebuke Job in Job 4 verses 1 through 5 through 25, through, through 27. In other words, the fourth chapter and the fifth chapter, Eliphaz is the one that began to falsely accuse Job and God got angry with him and says unto him, now he spoke well of Job, although he challenged Job in his thinking and his thoughts. But the Bible did say that Job didn't sin against God with his mouth. So when he finishes, then God now speaks over to Eliphaz, the Temanite, and says, my wrath is kindled. In other words, my anger is burning hot against you and against your friends because you and your friends did not represent me right. You didn't represent me properly. You didn't speak well of me. You took this moment when my servant Job was going through all the hell he was going through with boils on his body. He lost his family. He lost his sons and daughters. He lost his cattle. He lost his lamb. He lost many of his friends and he lost his servants. He lost all of that and his wife then lost her mind. And yet you all come to comfort him, but you speak to Job about me, not rightly. You didn't properly represent me. And God says, my, my, my fire, my, my anger, 
my anger is kindled. It is hot against you and against your friends. And, and he says, now there's something what you got to do. Take unto you now, 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 seven bullocks. Don't worry about all these numbers. Stop going with the seven is a perfect and blah, blah. Don't worry about that. Just continue moving forward. Too often we deal with numbers and as if we're trying to gamble. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Don't ever say that I said that Jones get move <laughs> seven bullocks and, seven <laughs> and go to where my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job, watch this, shall pray for you. For him will I accept. Notice Job is doing no sacrifices. Uh-oh. But God says to Job's friends that they must go and offer up these sacrifices. He says, if you don't, this is what God said, lest I deal with you after your folly. If you don't get up and get yourself now, go get these animals, these seven bullocks, and go get everything else that I told you to get them seven rams and go to my servant Job, offer up for yourselves burnt offerings, peace offerings to my servant. And get this, Job, it's not clear if he's a priest or not, but Job did offer up sacrifices unto the Lord uh, for his children just in case they did sin against God. And now God is going to require Job to offer up sacrifices for uh, they're going to have to offer up sacrifices with the aid, the help of Job. And Job, he ain't through. Job is going to have to pray for them. He says, in that ye have not spoken of me things, the right thing, like my servant Job. Notice he calls him, he keeps calling him my servant, my servant, my servant. Here's a servant that didn't spiritually know God. And we are sons and daughters of God. Can he call us his servants? Take this and go do it now. Fly. See you later. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zoph Zophar the ne Naamathite went. Sometimes it's hard for me to see. And went according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also except that Job. But I don't see what Job made a sacrifice. Isn't that something? Now watch this. So he says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So just because a person is going through doesn't mean that they sin, done wrong. Sometimes it's because of sin. Sometimes because they're sowing what they reap or reap what they sow. Sometimes it's a test. Sometimes it's the devil. Sometimes it's God. And the Bible said in James 1 and 2, count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith works it produces patience but let patience have a perfect work yeah so some things we go through is because it's time it's humanly time it's spiritually time for us to go through because we've got to go up in god to that next level and you can't get to this level because this level requires patience this level requires love, but you can't get this until you pass the test. So stay there and let that test do what it's supposed to do. Produce patience in you. And for God's sake, stop accusing people of sinning because they lost their house, their mortgage, their job, whatever the case may be. If, and if God didn't send you to tell them what they did, don't you dare tell them what they did wrong unless God reveals it. And it has nothing to do. You can be in the same situation. And just because you did wrong <laughs> and you lost that job and your brother lost that same job, it doesn't mean he did what you did. His could be a test. Yours could be foolishness. Ooh, out. Listen, I don't know if y'all got time, but come tomorrow morning, Saturday, 
I'll be in Caseyville. I'm leaving tonight when I finish this. I'm leaving tonight to go and to teach the Sunday school conference for my brother and my friend, the Pastor Nathan Johnson. I thank God for him on today. Uh, uh, we had a beautiful time, an awesome time last year. And he has called me to come back to do part two. Listen. There it is. There it is. And I have my own Sunday school conference coming up, ladies and gentlemen. It is for free. It will be November 16th from 11 to 1. Listen, we're going to do a full one hour instructional section or session. We're going to have fun and games. Going to learn how to create your, your, your own YouTube channel. If you want to teach Sunday school on YouTube, I'm going to show you some do's and some don'ts. Uh, the, you can scan that QR code right there. It's free, free, free. But there will be a free will often raised because it is my birthday. I have poured and poured and poured out into everybody. It's time for me to receive a little of the cake. All right. And so, yes, we're going to go through, go over. I want to introduce you to my entire team. Everybody that does something from my barber to my secretary to the one who does my graphics, my thumbnails, the one who sings the jingle, uh, whatever. If they have a part in it, I might even have my grandson there who says uh, 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 Sunday school is now in session. All right. There it is. If you want to sow into this ministry and listen, those of you that want to uh, teach with me, just let me know. Send me an email to Rodney Jones, Sunday School at gmail.com if you want to teach a live lesson with me. Also, I'm looking for other people that want to say Sunday School is now in session and ring the bell. Send me those videos. Send me, send me those videos. Send me an email and I'll give you a link because I want to feature everybody. That's what I'm about to do. That's what I'm about, featuring everybody. That's it, my brothers and sisters. I gotta get out of here. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you give thumbs up, share this lesson as well, and leave some comments. And remember, I will not be live streaming Sunday because I will still, I'll just be flying in from Caseyville. So I won't have time to do it. So look for me to be back on track in a week or two. Remember my motto, teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. And yes, I'm going to the Holy Convocation, Memphis, Tennessee. A child saved is a soul saved plus a life. Amen. Thank you for joining the Sunday School lesson today with Dr. Rodney Jones. If you enjoy what you heard, please like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you.